believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, even the Samaritan woman. Hallelujah. He believes that the worship should be in, a, in, in Jerusalem. But the Lord Jesus Christ told him that the hour cometh, and thou is according to the Lord Jesus Christ. When the time comes that you neither worship the Father here or neither in Jerusalem, because he said that, Father, that the Father is, is, a, is a spirit, and they that worship him, Jesus said, must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the issue, brothers and sisters, is not worship. The issue is the object. Who are we going to worship? Jesus said to the Samaritan, we know who we worship. We know what we worship. Because we understand if we, if we check the history of the, the Israelite, it is the, the Jews, amen, to them that the first salvation was first given to them. Amen. Before it was given to the Gentiles. It was to the Jews first. So Jesus said, we know who are we worshiping for salvation is of the Jews. He talked to the woman, you don't know who you're worshiping. Amen. Hallelujah. So again, hallelujah. I believe that uh, if we truly know the Lord, we will learn how to worship God even more. And we will do more than we are just doing right now. Amen. If we will just understand, hallelujah, how, how powerful our worship is, you will not just stand there. We just crossing your arms, hallelujah, looking somebody else, hallelujah, just doing their things. Remember that we are commanded, all of us. The book of Psalms says, let everything that hath bread, praise ye the Lord. So there is no exception in worshiping God. If you are praying, if you are, if you are praying, hallelujah, if you are alive, you are commanded to give God praise and worship. You see, when we come together every week and meet, meet in our online service every Friday and Wednesday evening, we are coming together for a worship service, right? Hello? Amen. Amen. But I'm convinced that many of us don't really know what worship really is. We come together and sing the songs of praise for the song, but the song is not to worship. We love to hear the music play, but the music itself is not to worship. As much as we love you know, this guy playing their instrument, this song leader, this backup singer singing a song of praise. But that alone is not worship. Amen. All these things are just an instrument that we used to bring us into a place of real worship. Amen. The things that we do, hallelujah, here are helping us to create an, art, an atmosphere. Amen. So that the Spirit of God will come down into our presence, into our midst. Because the scripture says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So all these things are just an instrument that leads to bring us into a place of worship. But they're not worship in and of themselves. For true worship, true worship comes from our hearts. Right. Hallelujah. True worship comes from our hearts. See, there are a lot of people who believe that if they just know. Come here every every Monday night, hallelujah. Even into the church. Drop the drop that body down in the church and you will sit there like a statue, amen. They can't even lift their, their, their voice, they can't even lift their hands, hallelujah. They thought that just that just being in the church, even to them, probably to some of them that's worship. But it's not, hallelujah. That's not what worshiping God is really all about. See, if we really worship God, all of the things that we do, you know, playing the music, singing songs, clapping our hands, jumping up and down, dancing in the presence, whatever else you feel like doing, all, all physical manifestations of worship are all uh, just manifestations of worship. But before those actions can be considered worship, before those things that we are doing inside the church can be considered as worship, there has to be something even greater even greater happening in one man's heart and spirit. And that is what God is looking for. To worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not just to go to the flow, with the flow, with the motion. We're not just acting, we're not just performing here. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let your mind, hallelujah, focus on those things. But instead, we need to give it to God. We, our heart should be right with God. Amen. Israel worshiped God loudly and boisterously. 
We as Pentecostals, amen, are known for loud, noisy, lively, unrestrained worship service, amen. This is like our great part. We dance, we jump, we sing, we shout, sometimes we cry. That's who we are as a Pentecostal, amen. We're not like those who go to the house of God singing a cappella song. We love to hear the sound of the string instruments and the percussion instruments and the wind instruments. Amen. We take the word of God quite literally. In Psalms 150, verse 25 says, Praise Him in the sounds of the trumpet. Praise Him in the psalter and the harp. Praise Him in the timbrel and dance. Praise Him in the string instrument and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high surrounding sin Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but there is something that stirs within you and the music begins to play. I cannot just stand still when I hear the praise, praise song or the worship song. When they begin to, 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 to play their instrument, especially for the Lord, amen. I cannot just stand still. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, how they sometimes I have to clap and sometimes I have to shout. Sometimes I have to dance on the drums and guitars. Why? Because music has the power to get your body moving. Even when you don't feel like moving. Don't you experience that? Sometimes you're riding, riding in a, uh, let's say in a, in a car and you hear a song that you know, you just flick your finger because that's, music, that's what music does to our body. Sometimes we tap our, you know, our feet. Now, if we can do that to a, a, a worthy song, hallelujah, why not? I got the same thing when we hear a worship song, praising God. <laughs> hallelujah. But again, I want to emphasize, and I would like, I would like to highlight what is this music, amen, hallelujah, is not the point of worship. It's only an outward sign of an inward feelings. And those things, hallelujah, become the manifestations of what we truly feel about God. Amen. That's why sometimes when we see the solemn song, hallelujah, there's somebody who begins to, to cry, tears begin to drop from their eyes, hallelujah. Because sometimes, hallelujah, those music and songs, the lyrics of those songs, amen, begin to resonate in our spirit. The love of God, hallelujah, towards us. See, the music of the world has the same power to us. Now some of you write country music and your body gets moving and swaying, you know, to the music. And the first thing you know, you might even break out into little uh, dancing even. Now some of you like soft rock music and some of you, God help you, mom, even like hard rock music. I, I, don't, I don't think, brothers and sisters, that you can call any of these types of music, worship music. Amen. No, amen. Because if they are truly worshipped, they certainly aren't worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not the music that is the real worship. Real worship, brothers and sisters, is not the music, but music can be a part. Let me say it once again. Music can be a, can be a part, amen, of a real worship. Hallelujah. Jesus gave us the meaning of true worship in the passage that I just read to you. In John chapter 4, verse 24, he said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So worshiping God in spirit and in truth is what real worship is all about. Amen. We're talking about true worship. We're talking about God is looking for a true worshiper. Hallelujah. As I look around the church world and right here in our church, I wonder just how many people know what real worship is. Millions of people will, you know, drag themselves to church today, sit in a, sit in a worship uh, service, watch what's going on, even stand up during the prayer of singing. Yes, they did their offering and do the preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. As we please sports sermon. Then God uh, drag themselves out the door of the church into the party and back again to wherever they come from. I mean, the, the worship service, hallelujah, never touch them, never change them. The way they come into the church, the same way they go out. 
They, they, they came to, to, to connect amen, to the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Through worship. Don't you know that if you know how to worship, the real worship, God can open the provisions for you. If you're really doing the real worship, God can convince you. God can change your thoughts in your mind. God can change your circumstances. If you know how to do your worship, God. Hallelujah. I thank God, hallelujah, that our timing here was extended to, to, to one hour. But I believe, brothers and sisters, that uh, what we're doing here from starting from September last year when the lockdown uh, started, amen, hallelujah, the Holy Trinity began to, to open up slowly. They gave us 30 minutes. And I thank the Lord for the wisdom and for the wisdom of our leadership to spend and to use these 30 minutes, amen, to worship God only, hallelujah. And so I thought, Pastor God and Pastor Ray, somehow, you know, we, we, we lay the foundation, amen. Praise God. Remember in a, when, when, when the Israelites, amen, crossed the Jordan River, amen, First, they, they send the, the musicians, the worshiper. Hallelujah. And the, when the wall of Jericho collapsed, it was the worshiper. Amen. Amen. And so, I believe that it paid up the 30 minutes that we spend every Monday night worshiping God. <laughs> See, when we 
we get into a place of worship in spirit and in truth, in truth that, that's the way it will be. Real worship is totally surrendering your will to God's will in every facet of your life. It's not giving part of your heart to God. It's not just part. Real worship is not just giving one third, one fourth of your, of your heart. He said, worship the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. That means that God wants the total of you, not just a part of you. That's real worship. Hallelujah. It's not giving God three minutes of your time as you fall asleep on your, on your seat. It's giving God all of your time. All of your time. Hallelujah. Real worship, brothers and sisters, is not just coming to the church. It, it should be a lifestyle. Praise God. It should be a lifestyle. You can have all the things of the church down perfectly. You can know how to stand, how to sit, how to look like you're worshiping, how to say certain words or phrases. But still not having true worship, it's possible. Now the woman of the well, the Lord Jesus Christ was talking, hallelujah, had a form of worship too. She was a religious woman who went to the church all the time. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said to him, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. He said, Our father of worship in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So it shows, hallelujah, evident, hallelujah, that this woman, amen, worshiping, is a worshiper, amen. But the problem is the object of his worship is not right. See, when you don't know the real God is, I don't care what you do. All you're doing is going to the wrong directions. It's like praying and praying and praying and you don't know who the real God is. Amen. You know, I thank the Lord that our two visitors came here tonight because they found out who the true God is. Amen. Amen. Real worship has come to from within. 
in your heart and from your own spirit. That's where we are worshiping. And if you learn to worship God with your spirit, with all your heart, none of those other stuff will be as important. Just Jesus talked to the woman, to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, the one that I just read to you. He said, The hour coming and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father. Hallelujah. In spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Amen. And then God said, The Lord Jesus Christ, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you can worship God anytime, any place, even yeah. at all time. Because true worship is to stay in, in, in living a life that is wholly dedicated to God. That is true worship. True worship can only come in our spirit. It's totally surrendered and immersed in the spirit of God. True worship, brothers and sisters, can only come as, a, as we lose ourselves in our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you get lost in Jesus and you begin to serve Him, praise Him, sing to Him, glorify Him, forget about everything else, then, hallelujah, you can begin to enter into real worship. That's, that's the kind of worship that God is looking for. When we come together, amen, let's come to a real worship service where we can just get lost in the presence of God. And allow the Holy Ghost to have His way in us, in our, in our church. Hallelujah. So let me ask you, are you the one God is looking for to worship Him in spirit and in truth? Because if not, hallelujah, we will need to we may need to check the way we, we do things for the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we worshiping God in a real sense of worship? Because if not, hallelujah, you are just like a Samaritan woman. You don't know what you're doing. Jesus said, we know what we worship. I hope some of us, many of us can say, we know how we worship. We know we worship. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we give our Lord a clap of our Lord? Can we stand with me? Hallelujah. Praise God. Just worship the Lord for a little while. Come on. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord for a little Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We give you all praise. the words that you just heard tonight. Hallelujah. God is looking for a real worshiper. Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Jesus is longing for a true worshiper. He's searching as mighty as, as He is, as powerful as God is, still, He is looking for something that only you can give. And that is worship, real worship. Jesus. As you close your eyes, just to, to avoid any destruction, I want you to connect with God right now. For God is a spirit and He is here right now.
gave us the time to spend with Him. Why don't we use it? Hallelujah. Now we have a time to, to commune with the Spirit of God. Let's use it.
Don't give the time to prepare for an uploading tithes. At this point, we're going to worship the Lord in our giving. Hallelujah, we're going to pray, Lord Jesus. God, as we come to this point in giving our tithes and that offering to you, Lord God, hallelujah, we ask you to bless every person that is here tonight, their employer, their resources of kingdom, oh God, hallelujah, continue to prosper them, oh God. Lord, bless the hand that's going to participate in kind of worship, oh Lord. Lord, you are, you told us, oh God, hallelujah, that if we're going to give you the, with a cheerful heart, oh Lord Jesus, you're going to uh, uh, make our birds overflowing, oh Lord Jesus, Lord, as we, uh, Give our eyes and up offering, Lord God. Bless the hands of God. Bring them back, hallelujah, a hundred folds, O oh Lord Jesus. And use this, O oh God, to multiply this love offering in Christ for the furtherance of your kingdom. We love you and we praise you. We give you thanks and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
In your mighty name I pray. 